the history of the uh, Ringling Museum is really the history of the development of Sarasota from a small sort of fishing village into really what is becoming a dynamic, exciting uh, community here. And along the way, the Ringling Museum attracted, uh, well, first of all, John Ringling brought his wealth and his uh, vision to this campus here uh, by deciding to build a building and build a collection to leave as his legacy. Uh, Sarasota was in all the major magazines in 1930 when Ringling announced this, uh, this museum in a swamp, essentially, is where it was located. And so uh, from that beginning, the beginning of tourism in Sarasota, all of those things sort of were because of John's uh, you know, commitment to building a legacy and also commitment to helping to grow the, uh, the city. He died in 36, and at that point in time, uh, he left the museum to the citizens of Florida. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, the museum continued to grow. And along with that, uh, we brought our uh, first director, Chick Austin, who was a phenomenal individual, who really brought uh, not only the visual arts, but the performing arts into play. He purchased the historic Oslo Theater, which is the oldest, uh, it's an 18th century Italian theater in the United States, uh, where he began doing performances, in which we do today. We have uh, fantastic performances in that space. He also uh, developed the conservation of the collection so that we could preserve it, and, and, he and he developed relationships actually with Florida State University, with uh, others uh, in the community, and national relationships as well. So bringing artists to Sarasota, who eventually ended up staying here, creating an artistic scene in the 50s and 60s that was very dynamic. Or Sid Solomon was probably one of the most uh, or instrumental artists to move here. And then he brought a lot of the artists from East Hampton uh, down to Sarasota and, uh, uh, and, and began building this kind of art scene here with Chick Austin, our first director, and the museum as, as part of all of that. The Ringley Museum is a world-class museum, and it comes from a number of different uh, strengths that we have here. One, we're one of the large, in the top 20 uh, museums in North America for uh, the size of our facilities, the size of our campus. We're also uh, in the top 20 for the, uh, our admission and uh, the uh, visitation of people to the campus. So, and it's also a it's a full day experience here at the museum. You know, we have five different museums. We have the, the historic house on the water. And we have this incredible arboretum that has over uh, 200 species of trees, uh, 400 species of wooded shrubs, 2,000 examples on our campus. When people come here, they can just wander and enjoy, pop in and out of the museums, uh, go down to the uh, bay and look out over the bayfront in this beautiful bay. I don't know many museums that can really offer that kind of experience. And then within the art collection, the European collection is one of the, one of the best collections in the country. Uh, it's something John built and it's, it's well respected and an excellent exhibition. In fact, you know, I, as we were talking earlier, we were traveling to see uh, that collection internationally. So uh, that collection is strong, uh, but we also have been building collections in photography uh, and in, uh, in Asian art, uh, particularly in uh, modern era Japanese uh, prints, which is a real strength of the museum. And we've been uh, consistently focused on uh, doing exciting uh, performance programs. We began with the uh, International Arts Festival about uh, 12, 13 years ago, uh, and then from that moved into ongoing uh, year-round 
uh, performance programming with artists from all over the world. There are many ways in which we uh, work and in, engage with our community here. Well, one strategy is providing music and activity on our campus in different ways. For instance, we do this Ringling Underground, which is focused on college students and young professionals, but attracts people of all ages. Uh, and in that program, we, you know, we provide bands, we bring bands in from out of town. Uh, uh, there's music, there's drinks, the galleries are open. Uh, 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 the attendees can go and check out the galleries, and they do. Uh, and they, they like that aspect of Ringling Underground. We also do Ringling by the Bay, which is really focused on older uh, folks, which happens to be a big part of our community as well. And that sells out. Uh, we do it this time of year twice, two times a month, and we limit it to 1,500 people a night, and it sells out every performance. And it's just people coming to have a good time, dance, be on the bay. And those are the types of the social kind of interconnections that we provide here as an institution. But we also do that with programs uh, such as our uh, yoga programs that many museums do all, all across the country. But we've been doing it for many years. And it's a very popular uh, uh, program to do yoga out on the terrace of the Katazan, looking out over the Sarasota Bay. It's probably the most relaxing yoga you'll ever do. Our impact on the economy in Sarasota is fairly substantial. And just initially, we're a $24 million operation institution, the largest in uh, the South, actually, outside of uh, uh, Richmond, Virginia. And uh, we have a payroll of 12 million. That payroll gets, goes right into the community, goes into stores, in, the, in, the, uh, in shopping, and, and everything. Uh, so just right there, we have an impact. But we also attract uh, over 400,000 people a year to our property, of which uh, roughly one-third of those are locals, and the other two-thirds are come from away, uh, about a third of that comes from other places in Florida, and half come from uh, uh, outside of the state. And in fact, uh, every year that I've been here, we've had visitors from every state in the United States visit us uh, uh, during the year, except for the COVID year. We uh, are constantly attracting people to the community. That attraction, those tourists, now they don't always come specifically for us, but there is a good chunk of people who do come specifically for us. They spend money and spend a lot of it, and that helps build our economy here as well. So uh, we're very proud of the fact that you know we are uh, a, a, a significant driver to tourism in the community, not the only one. Uh, certainly, but we do have an impact on drawing people to Sarasota. The circus has had a, an, an important role, and for us, a circus is kind of, actually John Ringling would not, uh, I think, have wanted a circus museum as part of his legacy. That was actually uh, done by our first director, Chick Austin, who saw all of the circus materials that were around this community uh, in, the in the early 1940s. And he saw art in circus, which in, in those days, one wouldn't even go that route. But he could see the artistic value of the circus. And he began, and he began building this museum. And this room we're in right now, well, it wasn't here when he was here, but the, uh, as we walked in, those were the original buildings. Uh, that's John Ringling's, uh, where he parked his cars in some of those gallery spaces. So he reused those buildings to create a circus museum, which is the first circus museum in the United States. For Sarasota to evolve, we have to keep growing in, in areas. It's not like just scale, but it's about uh, growing in, uh, uh, in balance 
growing uh, with uh, a vision toward a diverse community, a diverse economy. The issues of equity and diversity are really critical uh, in all communities today, and we take it very seriously as well. We've worked hard to build a diverse board, to build a diverse staff, and we're making achievements in that, in that area, but it's an ongoing uh, battle. You know, we provide lots of services uh, both out in the community, uh, educational experiences out in the, in the community and on site here. We provide free admission for visitors who uh, have a food stamp card that can, they can come in for free and bring their families. But also, we provide a free day once a week for anyone to come visit the art museum and walk the grounds. So that's a commitment that's huge in, you know, that's a cost to us that's pretty huge, but it's something, something that John Ringling wanted and required, and required in his will, and it's something we're happy to do, and it brings in, it's our busiest day of the week uh, throughout the year. It's a great asset to the community to be able to access these, uh, these programs here for free. At the Ringling here, we bring lots of, of kids onto campus, but we, we have a robot uh, now that we have in the museum that a patient at the hospital can request a private tour. And so they bring that person an iPad, it connects with the robot, they can drive the robot through the museum. We have an educator accompanying the robot, but the, past, the, the uh, patient themselves are driving it where they want to go, what they want to see. And so they will they'll, we'll go to a painting, and, and then the educator will maybe talk about that painting for a bit, and then they'll get bored, and they'll wander off, go to some other place, and do the same. And it's, you know, it, it only hits a few number of people but it, it's such a wonderful way of make, bridging that connection to somebody who can't get here, can't come, and having that really personal, unique experience through the robot's eyes. Well, 100 years from now, we will have challenges ahead for the museum, uh, particularly with uh, the rise in water uh, here being at such a, a shallow uh, uh, so close to the bay. But we're working on ways to mitigate that damage. And in 100 years from now, I am very hopeful that we've addressed the issues that the museum will have relocated in, to some degree, uh, but not, not entirely, and that we will be still serving hundreds of thousands of people every year, providing great experiences and interesting engagements with the arts. I'm Stephen High. I'm the executive director of the John and Mabel Ringling Museum of Art, what we call the Ringling. And I have been a director here for 11 years, and it has been the best experience of my life.